Imagine standing at the edge of understanding only to have the universe pull the rug out from under you again. NASA has just issued another alert about Comet 3i Atlas. And I have to tell you, we're witnessing something that defies our expectations at every turn. Just when the observations begin to crystallize, just when the mathematics start to align and we dare to say, yes, now we understand what's happening, the cosmos delivers another surprise. It's like watching a shapeshifter move through space, refusing to be defined by our equations. For those following this extraordinary journey, you already know this is no ordinary visitor. This comet doesn't simply obey the laws we've written for such objects. It evolves, it transforms, it rewrites its narrative as it travels through our cosmic neighborhood. And what we're seeing today represents perhaps the most compelling evidence yet that we're observing something genuinely anomalous unfolding before our eyes. Before we go further, consider subscribing and turning on notifications if this fascinates you. Switch to full screen and immerse yourself in what comes next. Let me share with you what's actually transpiring here. This latest alert transcends mere brightness anomalies or intriguing visual features in our imagery. Those details captivate us, certainly, but what we're confronting now cuts to something far more fundamental. This time, the revelation emerged from the orbit itself. Think about what this means. Throughout the night, tracking stations distributed across our planet transmitted fresh, extraordinarily precise positional measurements. The same telescopes, the same observational protocols, the same data reduction algorithms they've always employed. Nothing in our methodology changed. Yet, when these new coordinates were integrated into our orbital calculation systems, something unexpected occurred. The residuals began behaving strangely. Now, residuals represent the tiny discrepancies between theoretical prediction and observed reality, where our mathematics tells us the comet should appear in the heavens versus where we actually find it. In an idealized universe with flawless calculations, these residuals would vanish to zero. But our universe isn't ideal. So small differences always exist. What matters is that these differences should remain random and minimal, scattered without pattern. That's not what happened. The residuals didn't merely increase slightly, they organized themselves, aligned in a coherent direction. This is profoundly significant because it reveals that something about the comet's fundamental motion has shifted. Consider this. With a typical asteroid or an extinct cometary nucleus, orbital prediction becomes remarkably precise using gravity alone. The sun's gravitational embrace, the subtle tugs from distant planets. Apply the mathematics and you know precisely where to find it. But three atlas refuses to be typical. It's alive in the astronomical sense, constantly exhaling jets of gas and dust from its surface into the void. And here's where Newton's elegant third law enters our story. When material erupts in one direction, the comet itself recoils in the opposite direction. We call this phenomenon a non-gravitational force, and it's rewriting the rules for this enigmatic traveler. Think of it as a cosmic engine constantly firing, perpetually nudging the comet away from the purely gravitational trajectory our equations predict. Until yesterday, we believed we had decoded this non-gravitational acceleration. We understood its direction. We had measured its strength. Our orbital calculations incorporated these forces and the universe appeared to make sense. But today, something extraordinary happened. To reconcile the new observations with reality, that push must now be oriented differently. The thrust vector from the comet's outgassing jets has rotated, not dramatically perhaps, but sufficiently that our algorithms cannot dismiss it. The mathematics simply refuses to converge unless we accept that the comet's activity has fundamentally transformed. That revelation alone would capture the attention of any scientist. When a comet spontaneously alters its self-propulsion vector, we take notice. But here's where the story becomes truly remarkable. While the orbital dynamics team wrestled with these numerical anomalies, the imaging team independently completed their analysis of an entirely separate observational data set. They had meticulously combined multiple exposures from different observatories, constructing extraordinarily high contrast images of the comet's inner regions. And because the cosmos has an elegant way of maintaining consistency, the visual evidence tells precisely the same story as the orbital mechanics. In last week's imagery, the inner coma and primary jet 
had appeared to stabilize into a predictable configuration. Any observer might have concluded this is the current state. This is how the comet expresses itself. Today's images reveal a different reality. The inner coma, that luminous, nebulous envelope surrounding the nucleus, has shifted its orientation. The brightest concentration of this glow has migrated. The primary jet, the most powerful stream of sublimating material, has tilted toward a new heading compared to its position just days ago, and the transformation extends beyond the dominant features. The secondary structures, those delicate fans and subsidiary streams have rebalanced themselves in response. The entire architecture has reorganized. Even in the distant background, the comet's tail now exhibits a subtle serpentine curve absent from earlier observations. It's as though the entire structure experienced a gentle torsion. Now consider what we have, two completely independent analytical approaches converging on an identical conclusion. The orbital calculations declare that the net force vector acting upon the comet has rotated. The direct imaging confirms that the physical jets and material streams erupting from the nucleus have rotated in concert. This isn't coincidence. This isn't some artifact of data processing. This is genuine physical evolution occurring on this object as we observe it. This is what NASA means when they announce that 3I Atlas has shifted once more. The comet is actively reconfiguring its outgassing behavior, which modifies its self-propulsion, which alters its trajectory through space. All of this unfolds in the present moment while humanity watches. The question that naturally emerges is why? What drives this restless transformation? To grasp the answer, we must first understand what a cometary nucleus truly is. It's not some monolithic stone hurtling through the void. It is something far more delicate and dynamic. A dirty snowball, if you will, or perhaps more accurately, a fragile conglomeration of frozen debris held together by the feeblest gravitational bonds imaginable. Its surface wears a dark armor, a crust of organic compounds transformed by cosmic radiation across epochs spanning millions, perhaps billions of years. Yet beneath this protective shell lie reservoirs and strata of volatile ices, water ice, carbon monoxide ice, carbon dioxide ice, all locked together with dust and mineral fragments in a delicate frozen matrix. As a comet approaches the sun, this ancient ice begins to warm, but not uniformly. Solar radiation bathes only the hemisphere facing our star at any given instant. The insulating crust conducts thermal energy poorly, so heat percolates gradually into the deeper substrates. When temperatures climb sufficiently, those volatile ices undergo sublimation transforming directly from solid to gas without passing through a liquid phase. Pressure accumulates beneath the crust until the structure can no longer contain it. A fissure opens, a weak region fails. Suddenly, you have a jet high pressure gas laden with entrained dust particles erupting into the vacuum at hundreds of meters per second. Now, here's what makes this fascinating. The surface of 3I Atlas likely resembles a complex mosaic of geological features. Sealed fractures, dormant vents frozen over from earlier episodes of activity, volatile deposits at varying depths distributed chaotically across the nucleus with no discernible pattern. For the past several months, it appears one particular vent, or perhaps a cluster of vents, has dominated the activity. One major fracture has remained open, steadily expelling material generating that prominent jet visible in our imaging. Because this source has maintained relative stability, the non-gravitational acceleration acting on the comet has likewise remained relatively constant. But this comet has spent months in space now cycling through thermal extremes as it sweeps past the sun and recedes outward again. The deep interior continues absorbing energy deposited during perihelion passage. Temperature gradients are evolving. Pressure accumulates in previously dormant regions. Fractures that were mechanically stable may now be approaching critical stress thresholds. Eventually, something must yield. One scenario is straightforward. A new vent has breached the surface. Perhaps a reservoir of volatile ice lay buried beneath a fragile crustal layer on a different region of the nucleus. As thermal energy finally penetrated to that depth, the ice reached its sublimation threshold. Pressure escalated until it explosively ruptured the overlying material and now you have an entirely new jet emanating from a completely different location. If this new source is sufficiently vigorous, 
If it expels enough gas and dust, it could compete with or even dominate the original vent. The instant that happens, the net thrust vector acting on the comet rotates, the trajectory shifts, and our images capture a transformed configuration. That's one explanation, and it's elegantly simple. New vent opens, activity pattern reorganizes, everything changes. But there's an alternative possibility that may be even more intriguing. Perhaps the entire nucleus is altering its rotation state. You see, when jets erupt from a comet, they don't merely push it along a single axis. They generate torque as well. Consider the physics of a rotating ice skater. Extend the arms outward, angular velocity decreases, contract them inward, the spin accelerates. Cometary dynamics follow analogous laws, though instead of human limbs, we're dealing with gas jets erupting at chaotic angles from the nucleus surface. With every eruption, a subtle rotational force acts upon the body. Over countless revolutions, these seemingly negligible forces compound into measurable effects. Earlier data confirmed that 3i Atlas exhibits anything but straightforward rotation. There's no elegant spin around a singular unchanging axis here. The dynamics are considerably more elaborate. We're likely observing tumbling motion or perhaps precession following an intricate trajectory. Should the rotational axis be precessing, executing that characteristic wobble reminiscent of a spinning top knocked off balance, then every vent's spatial alignment undergoes constant transformation. The vents themselves might remain fixed on the surface, their output steady. Yet the cosmic direction they face keeps evolving because the nucleus itself performs this gradual perpetual wobble. If this describes our reality, then what we're seeing today, this latest directional shift in thrust, may simply be another frame in this slow motion processional evolution. Perhaps no new vents are awakening at all. Perhaps the existing ones are merely reoriented because the entire body has tilted through another degree of its wobble cycle. Both interpretations hold scientific merit. Both align with our measurements. In all likelihood, we're observing a hybrid phenomenon, fresh vents activating while rotation simultaneously transforms. We're dealing with a system of remarkable dynamical richness. Yet, here's what troubles me as a physicist. With each thrust vector modification, with every newly active jet or axis reorientation, the internal stress architecture of this object undergoes radical reorganization. Reflect on what this means. The nucleus maintains only marginal structural coherence. There's no rigid skeleton here, no tensile strength to speak of. We're observing a gravitationally bound rubble pile, ice fragments, and rocky debris clinging together through weak van der Waals forces and minimal gravitational attraction. When outgassing commences from a particular region, material gets ejected from that local, redistributing mass and disrupting the delicate force equilibrium throughout the interior. Terrain that dwelled in perpetual shadow suddenly receives reflected solar radiation from neighboring features. Stress fractures that achieve stability under previous loading conditions now experience forces from entirely different vectors. Subsurface voids that had reached pressure equilibrium may now face compression or expansion beyond their previous experience. On short time scales, days, perhaps weeks, this appears as the phenomenon we're currently documenting. Another shift occurred. Jet alignment changed. Our trajectory models needed recalibration, scientifically captivating, dynamically active, yet not immediately threatening. But extend the timeline to months, and these cascading stress redistributions accumulate consequences. Every reconfiguration adds another burden this delicate architecture must bear. Every fresh arrangement poses a structural endurance test. History offers us precedent here. Comets born within our solar system have followed this exact evolutionary pathway. We've documented the progression, incremental non-gravitational force variations, morphing jet architectures, spin rates, climbing as outgoing torques dominate. Then occasionally with startling abruptness, total disintegration, the nucleus reaches its structural breaking point. Sometimes an object in space reaches a breaking point. The stresses build, the internal forces lose their balance, and then suddenly the nucleus can no longer hold itself together. When that happens, the comet can fracture into a few major chunks, or it can simply crumble into a diffuse swarm of debris and dust. In either case, the comet as a single unified body is gone. Now to be absolutely clear, no one is officially claiming that 3-3 Atlas is on the verge of that fate. 
the wording in the official notices is careful and conservative. They speak of revised orbital solutions, measurable shifts in ouching directions, changes in the net non-gravitational acceleration acting on the object, all rigorously technical, all deliberately neutral. But consider the subtext. You do not allocate precious telescope time. You do not ask observatories to increase cadence and tighten their coverage. You do not circulate internal notices to multiple research teams if you believe you are witnessing something mundane. You do that because something genuinely interesting is underway, something that might evolve into a much more dramatic story. You do it because this object is active in a way that matters, in a way that could carry real consequences for its future. So what does this all add up to? It means that 3 Atlas is not quietly drifting out of the solar system along some frozen, unchanging path. Its story is not over. It is still venting, still erupting, still sculpting its own trajectory layer by layer, jet by jet, rotation by rotation. Yesterday, the thrust direction shifted. Today, it's shifted again. If that keeps happening, if each new orbital fit demands a new thrust vector, if each new image shows the jets leaning a bit further, then we are effectively watching a physics experiment play out in real time. What makes this so profound is that 3 Atlas is not native to our cosmic neighborhood. This comet was born around some distant star in a planetary system utterly separate from our own, perhaps billions of years ago. It has spent eons wandering through the frigid emptiness between the stars, locked in darkness, frozen and inert, slowly tumbling through interstellar night. Then, by sheer chance, its trajectory intersected our solar system. It fell toward our sun, warm for the first time, in an unimaginably long interval and awakened. It began to do what comets do, outgassing, forming jets, growing a coma and a tail. But it is doing all of this with a composition and internal structure forged under alien conditions unlike the comets we know so well from our own system. That is the central mystery. We do not yet know how dense this object is, how strong its internal framework might be, how volatile its ices are, or how its interior layers are arranged. We are inferring all of that by watching how it reacts to sunlight, to heating, to its own outgassing. And what the behavior tells us so far is that this comet is restless. It is unstable. It refuses to settle into a simple pattern. Perhaps given enough time, the activity will calm. Perhaps in a few weeks or months, the jets will diminish, the configuration will stabilize, and 3i Atlas will limp away, mostly intact, fading gradually as it escapes back into the deep interstellar dark. Or perhaps the stresses will continue to mount. Perhaps one more jet will open, or one more subtle change in the spin will redistribute the load just slightly beyond what this fragile structure can bear, and then something fundamental will fail. Right now, no one can say which path it will take. That uncertainty is what makes this object both exhilarating and exasperating to study. We are watching an interstellar visitor experience its first and possibly only close pass by our sun. And the ending to this cosmic story has not yet been written. This latest alert is not an ending, but another chapter in an unfolding cosmic drama. It is a reminder that 3 Atlas is not the kind of object you observe once, file away, and forget. Each time we turn our instruments toward it, the story has shifted. Each update answers one question and asks two more. Will the next bulletin tell us that 3i Atlas has finally settled into a stable, quiet state? Or will it reveal yet another change, perhaps more dramatic than any we have seen so far? The universe is not telling us in advance. The only way to know is to keep watching.